Today we had the pleasure of having had our opening keynote from Sir Leszek Borsiewicz. Uh, uh, so Sir Leszek, um, you discussed uh, in your opening keynote, you talked about some global health issues and mm. some solutions that we needed to develop. Could you uh, discuss a bit further what are some of these global health challenges that we would be facing? The point I was trying to make this morning is we face two questions. What do we mean by global? And in the context of Cambridge, where we strive to serve society, that the society we now serve is a global society. And therefore, the needs for global healthcare are as much the needs of poorer communities as they are richer communities. So we're trying to address these, that the big challenges are straightforward. Infectious diseases remains a major problem. Non-communicable diseases are rising, cardiovascular deaths, diabetes, and paradoxically obesity rising at the same time as we see undernutrition in other areas. Maternal health and mortality still hasn't been dealt with on a global scale. So we have some things that really need uh, to be addressed urgently. But the point I was trying to make this morning is the big global challenges are inextricably interlinked so that food security, the provision of food for a larger population in the world, the provision of drinking water supplies are inextricably tied with the issue of health. And if we fail to develop the productivity, then education and health will suffer. If we don't have good education systems, then people's knowledge, particularly as we get to non-communicable diseases of what is necessary, in order to, uh, to, to maintain good health in the world will also suffer. So these interactive natures are absolutely vital. And above all, we mustn't forget that global does not just mean the high-tech end of what can be delivered in the West. It has to embrace the problems of sub-Saharan Africa, of the uh, problems of India, and of many, many parts of the world uh, where people are still living on a dollar a day and therefore affordability of technology is just has to come to the forefront as well. Thank you and that gives our leaders of tomorrow and some online audiences quite a few challenges that they can think about that need to be addressed immediately. Mm. Do you think as we look out, I think there's a lot of Vision 2050 plans that mm. keep going on these days, when you look at global health and the challenges that we will face out in 2050, is it going to change dramatically from the same challenges we've just talked about, talked about or is that going to be different? I think we will still face three huge challenges. The first challenge is that there will still be relative poverty somewhere in the world and that therefore we will still be dealing with problems of very poor communities. Um, and so the world will still be relatively unequal. Secondly, non-communicable diseases will become the dominant force. Um, hopefully, I work in infectious diseases, I want to see a diminution, because they will never disappear entirely, but a diminution of the impact of diseases such as tuberculosis, malaria, um, and other conditions. But that will just increase the focus on cancer, cardiovascular disease, the big killers that we see in the West and increasingly in developing countries. And affordability of solutions is going to be a very big issue uh, for the future. The big issue, however, for 2050 is that health, as I've already said, cannot be considered in isolation. 2050, we will have 10, maybe 11 billion people on the planet. How do you supply them with the land mass that is there? Climate change will have had an impact, be beginning to have a serious impact on arable land. Uh, do we have the crops and the type of crops that can grow in um, areas of the world which may not be substandard at the present time for arable production? Can we develop crops that will really work in it? Can we develop agricultural practices that will work? And while this is happening, the world is urbanizing even in the developing world. So the problems will be problems of big cities. How do you actually develop housing, sanitation, all of those public health measures uh, that can lead to a healthier uh, lifestyle. So the problems themselves may not change, but they will become larger in scale and they will ha still be happening in the context of poorer communities having less access to things which will actually improve health. So for me, a big push has got to be on affordable technologies and prevention and public health measures if we're going to get a real improvement for the whole world as opposed to just technologies that might improve the lot of those who are better off. And 
As we were delving into these challenges, there are huge problems that we need to deal with. And you also mentioned in your keynote that no institution can address these sure. by themselves. And which is the reason why we've created a platform like the Craft Summit, yeah. where we have uh, the leaders of tomorrow, the young people mm -hmm. uh, coming from across the world, but we also bring leaders of today who come as research pioneers, industrial leaders, and uh, policy makers. So what do you think of an initiative like Cap Summit? Uh, do you think it, there's a need for it? And what has your experience been so far? Yes, we do need something like the GAP Summit. What makes the strength of the GAP Summit is that this is coming from young scholars, young entrepreneurs, people who are just starting out. Um, bottom line is, you will still all be around in 2050. I won't be. Um, so it is very important that you begin to plan that world for tomorrow. But to do that, you have to be vested in the realities of what is actually there. And a summit like this enables you to do a reality check about what is possible against where you would actually want to. It's fine for us to be totally altruistic and think we're going to find all the solutions by 2050. I'll make a prediction. We won't. Because even if we do, there'll be new problems that we have to address. And the opportunity of getting people into a room where they can begin to talk about their views on what solutions are going to be necessary might enable a real focus on solutions rather than just reiteration of problems. Academics are very good at reiterating a problem. What I'm looking for from a summit like this is new innovative approaches towards finding solutions that will make a difference. Because at the end of the day, this is what this is all about, is can you make a difference and can that difference be affordable so that the solution is truly global and not merely restricted to those that can afford to pay. Well, thank you, Sir Deshit, for taking out the time both to come to the summit and for your inspirational words for people in our um, online video audience as well. Uh, thank you, and uh, we look forward to having you for the rest of the summit. Thank I you. look forward to that in, uh, indeed. Thank you very much thank indeed. You.